Arts and College is doing to, to prevent this digital divide. Steve, tell us more about the, the services that you offer and the sort of support that you offer behind the scenes. What, we, um, what we're hoping to, to develop down the track is to be able to provide access. Uh, part of our um, requirement for our regulator, um, our federal regulator, is to provide um, flexibility in learning, flexibility in access, um, and be able to respond to, to students' needs um, as they arise. One of those um, strategies that we've identified to deal with that is to be able to put um, some of our um, classroom-based lessons and our online lessons um, onto the web um, so that students can access them when they need to, if they need to, and wherever they are when they need to do it. Um, one of the issues with trying to do this at the moment is there's not enough bandwidth for us to be able to upload um, from our site. Um, we're in, unfortunately, one of the areas of Broken Hill that has probably one of the worst um, technology uh, internet systems around. Um, the old, um, we're still, we were actually still on pair gain lines um, when we applied for um, broadband. So we had all sorts of problems and it doesn't matter whether we, we spend $500 a month or $50 a month on internet speed, it's irrelevant to the speed that we actually get. So um, but not being able to upload podcasts and simple lessons and course material online for students to access at any given time of the day um, and to have it there forever, um, you know, like a Twitter type forum or a, a Facebook type forum, mm. um, it's just physically impossible to do. And how else, um, with the remote areas that we deal with in this community, how else do we access those students easily? And technology is the answer. Yeah. And, and some mean, of the um, niche, so, you know, there's a lot of e-learning. People will say you can do e-learning anywhere in the world. Why does Robinson College need to? delivery learning but you're doing some niche courses that are very relevant to certainly I think community here what one of the one of the um, the strengths of our organization is that we are very responsive and flexible in what we're offering so we're able to as a non-government not-for-profit community based organization we can make decisions very quickly about what's needed in a community so if there's a sudden demand for a certain course we're able to respond quite quickly and we do have lots of course content that's specific to this geographic area. We do lots of work around land and conservation management, national parks, agriculture, horticulture and those sorts of areas. And that content is very specific to arid zones and obviously with the way that global warming and the changes that are happening, um, the practices that, are, that have worked in this area for hundreds of years because they've had to, this, these sorts of climatic conditions that we experience here and what we're used to um, are now being replicated all over the world and people are going to be starting to come to look to areas like this to say, well, how has it worked for so long in that community? Will it work in ours? And we've got the course content because we've been delivering those courses for a number of years here.